Cormac McCarthy in The Passenger very surprisingly explores transgenderism over half a chapter. And he does it in such a unique McCarthyan way. First of all, it is a side quest from the novel. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video reveals nothing about the plot or the main characters. And this, the conversation happens between a transgender woman and one of the main protagonists, Bobby, but we learn nothing about Bobby in this conversation. But some of the things they talk about, which mainly relate to the soul and beauty are obviously important in the novel. And it's just kind of one of those symbolic reference that McCarthy puts in his novel to reinforce some of the themes he's trying to explore. And if you guys are interested, I have a free Cormac McCarthy newsletter that I send out. And I hope that it will change your mind about a lot of your favorite Cormac McCarthy books. I am a renegade McCarthy scholar and love to read secondary sources and find all the craziest theories and fun stuff about McCarthy and funnel it to you guys. So if you guys are interested in that, there is a link down below. But you would think that, you know, McCarthy, an older traditional typewriter, would maybe take an anti-trans stance. And it's he actually gives us a very mixed bag, though, because as we see that we're working through this character, and this character has some doubts about not being able to achieve a feminine soul. But McCarthy, McCarthy also talks about some of the beauty and uniqueness of being trans. We're going to read some passages now and we'll talk about this. So the scene starts out in the 1980s down in Mississippi on in the bayou. And they're in this restaurant and everyone's just is looking at them and giving these bad looks. And so like, of course, that's going to happen. Like, And that, this is actually a very unique situation because McCarthy is exploring a trans woman in the South in, in 1980. A very unique character you know, for the times down there. And it's also interesting that McCarthy actually finished this novel in 2013 and just hasn't released it. So a lot of his ideas really came before a lot of the, you know, the trans, the transgender movement over the last 10 years, really, you know, since 2013 has grown exponentially. So it's interesting to see him exploring these ideas before his opinion or other things were changed by a lot of the, the mainstream stuff. So we start off down here in this section. Some girls are just happy to do the hormone thing and keep their, you knows, but gender has meaning. I want to be a woman. I was always envious of girls. Just a little bitch. That's pretty much gone. I know that to be feminine, female is an older thing than even to be human. I want to be as old as I can be. Atavistically feminine. So atavistic means ancestral. So like an ancestral feminine energy. And this is a huge idea, right? That the feminine and masculine energy are older than humans. That they are the laws, the a priori laws of the universe. If you look at occultism and the Kybalion and uh, the Kabbalah and all these different things, there is like force and form, yin and yang, masculine and feminine. So that line, I know to be female is an older thing to be even human. A lot of really woke people would say that that's like a transphobic line. But if we look at like, a, once again, you know, that perspective of history, they would say that that's true. And this character is longing for that, though. This character maybe is buying into that and is longing to have that soul existence. And like I said, who knows if that exists or not. But McCarthy in this novel and in a lot of his works is actually trying to move us towards some of these a priori things. And gender is one of those things that is there. Sad to say. So then there's a very sad section about when Will, so the, this character's name is, was William. We really don't, I don't, I don't think, I tried scanning this chapter multiple times. I didn't get her, um, the name change. I'm sure there is one, but it, I don't think it was revealed. McCarthy does this all the time. Like we don't get name changes. So this character goes to see her mom and her mom is like, you know, in Mississippi is like WTF, like, you know, and asks all the questions like, are your boobs real? Why'd you do this? Or do you use the ladies room? And she is disenfranchised, you know, by this, of course. So then she's hanging out around the house and her sister comes home. And this is like one of these moments where I think McCarthy is really um, shines through here. So we're starting here. I'm trying to quit cussing. My sister came home from school and in about an hour, and of course she had no notion of who this creature was sitting in the kitchen with her mother until I spoke to her. She was 12 and she just looked at me and she said, William, is that you? You are beautiful. And then I busted out bawling. God, I love that child. And that is so beautiful that this, you know, young, innocent female character in 1980, you know, sees her brother who is now, a, you know, a woman, a trans woman and says, you know, oh my God, you are beautiful. And like supports her. And like, that's a big moment. And she starts bawling and like she, you know, she needed that affirmational support, you know, you know, especially back then to, you know, at least feel whole about herself because really cool stuff. So now we're going to kind of read about the transition process of this uh, trans woman. But I asked him what that meant. And he said, I said, yes, yeah, so you're a nasty bugger because we were friends by then. But I asked him what that meant. And he said that it means that you're going to be a good looking girl. And I said, that's not good enough. What about spectacular? And he smiled and said, we'll see. And we did. 
remember coming down one morning to go to the deli and I sort of trotted down the stairs. I just had jeans on jeans and a t-shirt and my titties jiggled. God, I was so excited. I ran back up the stairs and came trotting down again. But then of course, you know, she starts talking about, you know, drinking and almost finished me off. I was born an alcoholic. She goes into that for a second, which is interesting that it is true that, you know, trans individuals do suffer, um, on a per capita basis with uh, mental health issues more. And this actual, this novel is actually about mental health issues too, about the soul and about mental health issues because the other protagonist, William's sister in this novel has schizophrenia. And this character right here might be actually a mirror of William, no spoilers, because her sister that we just talked about um, comes and visits her and is very supportive of her. But I obviously can't go deeper into that connection and what it all means in terms of it contrasting um, William's relationship with his sister. So there's another great passage where they're talking about God and existence and purpose. And um, the character says, I need to spend more time with woman, with women and it's difficult. They feel threatened or we get to be friends and then I tell them and you can tell the, you can feel the distance settle in. Like she tells them that like, hey, I'm a trans woman because she must like look like a woman. You know, she must, know, people must not know. Rare exceptions, very rare. I'm trying to get Claire to come down here to go to school here. You can guess who's against that. I'm assuming her mom. I've been reading about the sexual dimorphism in the brain. It made me more, maybe more adaptable than people think. Maybe that you can change it. You know where this is going because we talked about it. I want to have a female soul. I want the female soul to contain me. That's what I want and that's all I want. I thought it might be always out of my reach, but now I've started to have faith. That's what I pray for when I pray, to be let in the door, to be a member of the feminine. Doesn't really have anything to do with sex, with having sex, and all the rest is just fluff. And this is interesting because I don't get what, so McCarthy of course is into science, right? He works with the Santa Fe Institute, is really into science. And then, you know, one of the big things in science obviously lately has been talking about the sexual dimorphism in the brain and you, whether you believe that or not, that is one of the scientific conversations. But I don't know, it seems like McCarthy is actually in these things contrasting it because we kind of feel bad for this character. You know, I want the female soul to contain me and like, Obviously, that may not happen, you know, if this character is seeking that, it seems like they, that's all I want. That's all I pray for. But then he once again contrasts this because look at this last line. So they um, they end their lunch or whatever together, and this is what Bobby thinks as she's walking away. He watched her until she was lost among the tourists, men and women alike turning to look after her. He thought, he thought that God's goodness appeared in strange places. Don't close your eyes. And so I think McCarthy's just taking like a interesting look at this, that like this is, you know, that this is just a unique part of our reality now that, you know, that trans people have a place in, in, in the world and like it's a thing. And like, you know, I feel like a couple of these lines with the sister and the end of the chapter, which, you know, it's one of, you know, considerably one of the most important things. The final statement is don't close your eyes, you know, don't not see, you know, don't close your eyes to other types of people and where beauty may lie. And that's, you know, that's how I kind of feel also that like, you know, I've been friends with and been mentored by trans people and some, I can 100% attest that some of them changed my life, like helped me in ways that I wouldn't be here speaking to you right now and like sent me in directions and like helped me out so much. And if I was resistant to that, even just a little bit, I never would have gotten any of that growth and any of that you know, knowledge. So let me know what you guys think. And if you guys want to hear how the kid from Blood Meridian is resurrected in The Passenger, go check out this video over here. Peace.